A little bit ago, Circle added a new feature called access groups. And the easiest way to explain access groups is to think of it like a bucket. And you can attach things from your community to this bucket, like spaces and courses and event spaces and things like that. And anyone who has access to this bucket then has access to all the things that you put inside of it. Although it sounds simple, it actually alleviates a big problem that I had with Circle for many years. And that problem stems from giving people access to something, making a change to the thing that they get access to, and not having that be retroactive because people were getting access to things individually rather than things all inside of this group or this bucket that you've put them into. And what that meant was anytime I wanted to use an external tool to give somebody access to Circle, and I made a change, I'd have to make all kinds of changes to those third-party tools, for example, Surecard or High Level or whatever it was initiating the change in Circle, it was not retroactive. So if I gave 100 people access to these three courses and then I combined those three courses into something else, I'd have to like upload CSV files to Circle. It was a nightmare. But that's all been solved, which means using third-party tools like third-party payment providers like Thrivecart, Surecart, High Level, whatever it might be, using Zapier, all these things have suddenly become infinitely easier to do. So I'm going to show you how to use this new access group feature. It's super simple on the circle side. And then I'm going to show you how I'm using it with a third-party tool in a funnel that I actually made a video already about here on the channel and how I'm giving people access to the access groups in a much easier way. So I've just kind of started setting them up in the last couple of days here. So you go under your settings inside of Circle, you go to uh, Audience, and then you go to Access Groups. And I'm going to create a new access group here. I've only uh, made, I made a test one that I no longer use, and then I just added one the other day. Um, but I'm going to add another one here. So I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it Convology Plus. And I, th I think I'll leave it at that name. Um, basically why I'm creating this access group, um, actually, I think this is a good point to talk about this, uh, paywalls can give access to access groups. So Circle's internal paywall system, which I actually use. Um, but the downside of paywalls is they don't really integrate with third-party uh, funnels and the, and the paywall system itself doesn't have a big funnel system yet. Um, so access groups are going to be my way of using funnels to sell access uh, to like a lifetime membership. Um, and then I'm just gonna create an access group so it's easier for me to manage over time. So I could call this anything I want, Convology Plus or Convology Plus Lifetime. I'll just keep it simple for myself um, and call it Convology Plus. And I can give it a description, which it says here, you know, it's just for you basically to understand what it's for. Uh, but I'll click Create Access Group. And then from here, what I get to do is add members if I want to. So at any time I could add people, which is good for management. And then I can go to Access and I can say, what should people get access to? Well, in my community, they're going to get access to everything here. So I'm going to add them to uh, all of these different spaces like this. I'm going to add these, and I, I could probably just click Add All, like that, for example, um, give them access to everything, and hit Save Changes. Now, what's really cool about this is that where I may have in the past removed somebody from my accelerators, for example, uh, if I did that, I'd have to go retroactively upload a spreadsheet that says these are the new things that all of these people, you know, find them by their email, etc. I've actually made a video about that. If you want to see how just radically obtuse that whole process was, feel free to go to my circle playlist. Um, but we can just remove any space we want to. And now suddenly uh, people are no longer in that space. Super cool. Um, really, really nice for future proofing your setup. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it. So now we have our Combology Plus access group. So I'm gonna come over to Zapier and just get a, a new Zap ready to go. I'm not gonna set it up just yet because we need to make some changes to the third party tool that I'm using to give access to Circle. This is the part where you're going to adapt this to however your setup works. If you're using High Level, which is the tool that I'm gonna to use to show how I'm using a funnel checkout in High Level to grant access to this access group, uh, then your process will be exactly like mine. If you're using another tool like Surecard or Thrivecart, it's going to be very similar. Your Zap is just gonna be a little different. So go ahead and follow along as I do the changes in High Level and the setup in High Level, and you can adapt this to whatever tool you're using. So I'm gonna make a new workflow automation inside of High Level. So we're gonna create our trigger as a payment trigger, and we're going to use the payment received. This is great because it works for one-time payments and subscriptions, and it works across the entire high-level ecosystem for, for payments. We need to add a filter though, and we can then filter what this is going to apply to. So we're going to choose 
Um, we can choose global product, payment status, etc. We'll choose global product and we'll say that our global product is our Convology Plus lifetime offer. For me, that's a one-time payment that somebody could make. I could easily have chosen a subscription there, a subscription product. Um, you can also choose the uh, source or payment status. You can choose different price points. Um, so like if I wanted to, for example, say that I only want this to happen if the source is a particular funnel, I could say funnel, and then I can do another filter and say uh, the subsource is, and then I can say an upsell, a one-step order form. So you can really, really get granular with this if you really want to. I'm simply going to make mine be if they buy this thing. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit save on that. Now what's gonna happen when that payment is received? Well, we need to send some information over to Zapier, which means that we need to come into Zapier and change this uh, to be an incoming webhook. So I'll do a search for webhook, choose webhooks, choose an event. We're going to catch a webhook and we're going to hit continue. We're going to continue again. And then we're gonna get our URL from Zapier for our webhook that we need to plug into high level. So coming back to high level now with our webhook copied, I'm going to go to webhook and choose webhook. I'll paste in my URL, I'll do it in a second. I'm gonna add some data here. And this is the data that I'm sending over to circle that I need. I'm gonna send over a couple of things. I'm gonna send over first name, I'll do first underscore name. You can put whatever you want there. We're gonna filter that out on the Zapier side. The value for their first name is going to be the uh, contacts first name. And I'm gonna send over email. And that value will be the contacts email. Pretty simple there. We only really need those two variables. I suppose you could send other things over to circle if you needed them. If you're using something like Thrivecart, Thrivecart actually has a default uh, Zapier integration or, or whatever third party tool you're using to send data to circle. Uh, in that case, it would be the same. It would be a transaction happens in Thrivecart. And then you would say, well, what do I want to send over to circle? First name, email, that type of thing. So the, the gist of it's going to be the same. Um, okay, so those are our two custom data that we're sending over, and I'm gonna put in my URL, I'm not gonna show you it, and then I'll hit save action. Okay, great, now we're sending our webhook over to Zapier. Now at this point, we can add additional onboarding things that we'd like to do. So for example, I could uh, send an email, which I'm, I'm gonna choose that option, uh, because I need to send the onboarding email that I would normally send to someone if they signed up through uh, my uh, paywall at circle, I have a whole other automation set up for that. But in this case, I'm just gonna send them the same templates. And if you're interested in how these templates work, I have plenty of other videos on my channel about using uh, templates in high level, makes it super easy. So you'll see how fast I can make this. I'm gonna send them my Convology onboarding first email. I'm gonna hit save. Then I'm gonna wait for three days. This is my just onboarding funnel for uh, my community here, my membership. And then I'm gonna send them another email. And all of these are pre-written emails. Everything's done so I can make little changes like this to my automations and not spend a ton of time like stressing about it. It's just done. Hit save action. Uh, and then if they're not already, I'll tag them as part of my newsletter. I give all of my members my newsletter. And there we go. That's my onboarding automation that I'm going to hit save on. Now we need to send a test over to uh, Zapier in order for us to be able to have data to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit test workflow, push a user through, and then we're gonna get that data inside of Zapier. All right, now that I'm in Zapier, I sent the test. I can go to test here and I can see that I have a record. I'll just continue with our selected record. And our action is going to be a circle action because now we have some data. And this circle action is going to be configured identically to however you've sent data to uh, Zapier. If this first step here was not a webhook, this could have been Thrivecart. And this could be when a Thrivecart subscription starts or when a purchase happens in Thrivecart. And you're going to get the same fields that I'm gonna map here. So you're gonna follow along at this point, regardless of the tool that you used. So you might be tempted to start with add member to access group, but this only works if they already exist in your community. And in my case, they wouldn't at this point in most cases. So I'm going to instead say invite member. And this won't hurt anything if they already exist. It basically just bypasses it. Um, so I'm gonna hit continue, it's gonna invite the member. And now I'm just gonna map the email and the name fields. I don't need to map anything else at this point, but you're welcome to if you want to. So I'm gonna map the email there, there's my test, and I'm gonna map the first name. And they can always go in and change this. If for some reason they put in a different first name, which would be weird, they could change it when they get into the community. Now the community is gonna be your community that you've connected to Zapier already, which you would have done. And then you can do things like profile fields, all that other stuff, um, but we're not gonna do any spaces. This 
this would be the old way of doing it. And this is the way that got me into all kinds of management trouble, having to go back and retroactively change things with CSV files. And I have a whole video on that. We're going to leave this blank. We're just inviting them to the community because instantaneously we're going to add another action that does all the rest. You can choose whether to skip the invite email or not. I'm going to leave that alone here. Now you can see here, I've, I've already tested with this test user. They're already a member of the community. Terrific, that's totally fine. So now we're gonna add another action and this action will be circle and our event will be find member. Now we're going to find this person we just added. Super cool because it's, watch how easy this is. Inside of our community, we find people by emails. What email are we finding them by? The one that came in from our tool that we use to send the data to Zapier. Hit continue and let's test this step just for fun. There it is. It found our user. So we've got this step working. And now what are we going to do? We're going to add an event circle and it's going to be the one we didn't previously do, which is to add the member to the access group. We'll go ahead and hit continue, select our community. The access group would be the one we just made or whatever one you want. And the email is going to be the email that we got from finding the member. Well, it's the same email, but I like to use the step from finding the member and say right here, find member in circle. There it is, hit continue. And then you can hit test step. Terrific, your message member has been added to the access group. We can confirm that by coming back over to our community, coming to our access groups. And if I click into my Convology plus one I just made, there it is. I have been added to the access group. And if I check the access for this person that I've just added, which is just my test user, you can see here that I do have access to all of these different spaces. Why? Because they are in the Convology Plus access group here. And I can choose to manage the access group, remove from access group if I wanted to manually do something, if I needed to moderate this user. All right, and that's that's the end of this zap. So let's go ahead and click publish. Now at any time I could come back to this access group and I can click on the three dots and click edit and I can come to access and I can say, oh, you know what? I'm getting rid of my accelerator. So I can hit remove and then all members of the access group no longer have access. And at any time I can come in and add it right back. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is how you can use access groups with paywalls with a little asterisk at the end that you can't use paywall. This is pretty stupid. You can't use paywalls that already existed prior to the access group feature being added. It drives me crazy because I've got so many different paywalls that basically can't use access groups now. Um, but you can just remake your paywall if you want to. Um, but we're going to go to our paywall section, create a new paywall, and I'll show you how to add them. Okay, so we're creating a paywall under settings paywalls, uh, create new. You can give it a display name. I'm just going to do uh, access group test just because you have to give it a name to go to the next step. Configure it however you want. Then you need to set a price. I don't know, just put a price in there as a placeholder. Hit save. And now here under paywall access, this is the key. You can see there's the new access group feature. If I were doing this all over again, which I might just bite the bullet and do it this way. If our settings all up all over again, I would select an access group that someone got to from this paywall rather than individual spaces right here, space access because it's so easy to edit an access group and have all of your incoming streams, whether it be a paywall customer or an external source adding them to the group, you can edit one place for everybody. If I don't remake my paywall and my paywall still gives people access through the space access manager, what's going to happen is I'm gonna to have to edit my membership in two places. The access group for people that got access from external sources and the paywall the older paywall that uses space access, which I'll show you that right here. So here's my existing paywall. If I go to paywall access, I don't have access to the access groups. I literally have to be like, give access, take access. Granted, this is not, I mean, I'm kind of like, I don't think I'm manufacturing a problem, but it's two places rather than one. I have to come in here. Let's say I wanted to get rid of accelerators. I'd have to hit remove here and then go into the access group and hit remove. Not the end of the world. I hope that look at access groups was helpful, giving you an idea for how you can use them for your circle community, whether it be through internal paywalls or external sources, which I think is the real key here, external sources giving access to your community, and then just giving you one single place to edit everything. It alleviates so many problems that I've made videos about in the past. If you're looking for more information about circle, you can check out the rest of my circle videos right here.